Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I would like to go over a mask off moment that I realized while doing the right to repair stuff that I do that I think is instructive because you're going to see this very often throughout your life in things that have nothing to do with right to repair or fixing cars. This results from an email that I received about yesterday's video. Judge denies automakers right to repair injunction, your car, your data. In that video, I was discussing how a judge is moving forward this ballot initiative and really just kind of shooting down a lot of the crap that you're hearing from automakers regarding this that was voted on three years ago by Massachusetts residents. The right to repair law that got voted on is very, very simple. A yes vote supported requiring manufacturers that sell vehicles with telematic systems in Massachusetts to equip them with a standard open data platform beginning with model year 2022 that vehicle owners and independent repair facilities may access to retrieve mechanical data and run diagnostics through a mobile-based application. This is very simple. If there's a computer in your car, that computer is collecting information about the car, information about you, you or the mechanic of your choice should have access to that data. As the person who purchased this $30,000 vehicle and the computer that's in it, you should be able to see what it produces because you own it, which is something that most Massachusetts voters voted in favor of, in spite of the automakers spending $26 million to try and convince people that this bill supported racism, assault, redlining, and rape, which I went over in this video that I did three years ago. In this video, I was playing an advertisement that this coalition they gave $26 million to had, where there was somebody that was walking to their car, and they've got scary music playing, and the, you know, the, the blue tinted fluorescent lighting, and it's, you know, implying that this person is about to get assaulted in a parking lot. And I also took a point off of their website, which has since been scrubbed and not found. Man, imagine that, where they were saying that civil rights groups have opposed this proposal due to concerns about racism and redlining. We are talking about a proposal that would allow you to have access to what is on your vehicle after you pay $30,000 for that vehicle. If my vehicle has a computer, I should be able to communicate with that computer in order to understand what is wrong with my car. If the computer says, there's this error code, this is why your car is not working, I, I want access to that because I bought the car and I bought the computer in it, and I shouldn't have to go to the dealer to figure that out because it's my effing car. And what they've done is they've brought all of this other stuff into it. Now, I think this is a teachable moment because they went so far outside the bounds of what is considered sane or at all related to the actual issue at hand that it really does kind of take the mask off and demonstrate something that's going on in many other areas of society. And it allows you to take a look at it. You have people saying that if you can get access to the data that's on your car so that you can figure out what's wrong with it, racism, redlining, rape, assault, burglary, and everything else that was in these commercials, they're actually invoking the genuine debate that we have in society. Like, has Title IX gone too far on college campuses versus you read the experiences that women have on Reddit r slash 2x chromosomes that talk about rape culture? You have the people that will read Thomas Sowell's Discrimination and Disparities. You have the people that read Abraham X. Kendi's books. You have the real discussion of redlining and everything else. There's These are serious, contentious issues that could be debated until we're blue in the face for nine hours and not have a resolution to. And the, the, the real thing that is disgusting here is invoking these issues that will get normal average everyday people to fight amongst each other rather than focus on who is actually fucking them over which in this case are the automotive manufacturers now this is obviously horribly done the advertisement at least they kind of did a halfway decent job of creating something that was kind of scary for a minute but when they actually quoted on, on this website that this you know civil rights groups say that this has concerns about racism and redlining you know that what they were doing here is they had somebody that was probably an unpaid intern or somebody that was getting paid minimum wage. There was a frat party scheduled that night they wanted to go to. They were told they had to type up something for this bullshit ad agency for this website, and they just wanted to get it done really quick so that they could get on and go to the party. So they typed this bullshit in there thinking that maybe that would make sense to somebody, but it doesn't. And it demonstrates what they were trying to do here because it is so far off. Because taking those issues, again, like the Title IX versus the rape culture thing, the redlining versus the woke, again, all the, taking that and putting it into diagnostic error codes for your car is so far off. It's so ridiculous. It is so unrelated that it takes the mask off and forces you to look at it for what it actually is. Automakers want to screw you over. 
but they realize that they don't have a good argument. If they get people to fight amongst themselves, do you not care about domestic abuse? Do you not care about racism and redlining versus wokeness has gone too far, rape culture, and you look at Title IX on camp. Again, getting average everyday people to focus on that and argue amongst themselves with that means that they are not going to show up to the ballot box and actually vote on this issue. Or maybe they'll vote no. That's what they were trying to get done, and they failed. It's very obvious that what they were looking to do is take a crowbar, pry it between an issue in society that upsets people, and just do this, and just kind of screw around enough to get those two groups of people to fight amongst each other, rather than actually look at the person who's doing real harm. Because they did such a poor job here, because that website was written so horribly, because these advertisements were done so badly, it revealed what they were actually doing. They don't care about racism. They don't care about redlining. They don't care about sexual assault, and they don't care about burglary. What they care about is making more fucking money. That's all they ever cared about, taking away your freedom to be able to do what you wish with what you own. This is something that goes on everywhere. You'll hear the people that are pro-Apple versus anti-Apple. Again, in r slash Apple, anytime I come on this, this guy's an asshole, this, that, and the other. What do I advocate for? What do I advocate for? Schematics be made available, parts be made available. So you have the choice. If you want to bring it to somebody like me, great. If you want to fix it yourself, great. If you want to still go to the Apple store, great. That's all we advocate for. You'll have people going on that are the pro-Apple people versus the anti-Apple people versus the Android people and everything else as if every single company is not trying to do the exact same thing. As if Samsung is not trying to bar import of any screen into the country based on a patent that's over 20 years old on pixel formation. You have people talking about personal responsibility versus people who are clumsy. Well, I guess, you, you know, you should get a better case or you shouldn't, you shouldn't drop your stuff. Or, I mean, man, if you, if you need a repair service, you must be a moron. It actually breaks all their things as if you've never broken anything before or been careless in your life. Or the people that say, you know, wow, what, what are you, just too poor to, be, get a, to get a proper warranty or insurance program? The idea is to try and frame the conversation in terms of something that you're already aggravated about and try to relate it to that so that they can take that aggravation you have about issue A and apply it to issue B when issue A has nothing to do with issue B. By making right to repair about personal responsibility versus these klutzes, by talking about it in these terms, you get people that are already aggravated at the fact that it seems like we have way too many social programs that don't work to think, well, man, these people should just have more personal responsibility. Why do they break their things? Or when you talk about it in terms of branding as if every other company isn't doing the same thing, you can have people who are pro a certain company immediately be against the concept if they believe that it is attacking their personal preferences as a user, when in reality, this has nothing to do with it. Why is it that 20 or 40 years ago, you were able to buy a schematic or the parts to be able to fix what you own and choose who can do it, and now they go out of their way to make sure that you can't even pair a sleep sensor to your computer unless you go to the manufacturer? How does that benefit you? How does that make your life better? How does that type of limitation improve your product? You're going to see this pattern emerge a lot over the next few decades as society destabilizes where normal, average, everyday good people are pitted against each other so that they don't notice which groups of people have done a bad job managing their city or their economy, which groups of people have gone out of their way to try and actively screw them and take away their freedoms. And the thing is, sometimes this works. Sometimes you really do have normal, average, everyday people fighting amongst each other rather than just looking and going, no, nah, I see what you're trying to do. And... Uh, Sometimes it doesn't work. Like here, here, it obviously did not work. But the thing is, 25% fell for it. 25% actually believed the ads. 25% of the people went to the polls and thought, oh my God, this actually supports racism and redlining and something else. When the mask is taken off to this great an extent, it makes it very obvious. And once it gets taken off, I want you to try to look for it in other areas of society. I want you to try to look for this in other areas where it is a politician, a corporation, an influencer, or whatever the hell else that tries to get normal people to fight amongst each other rather than look for what's really going on in any area, whether it is a political issue, whether it's right to repair, whether it is the budget in your local town, whatever it is. Are people trying to create infighting rather than actually looking at where there is waste, where there is incompetence, or where there is unchecked greed that is actually starting to screw over society rather than result in genuine innovation? And I want you to be aware of that when it happens because, 
Again, these people are probably never going to be held accountable for what they did. I do not expect the Coalition for Safe and Secure Data, the people that run them, and God forbid any of these car manufacturers will ever be held accountable for trying to associate independent repair with non-consensual sexual relations. It's just... I get it. They're never going to be held accountable or responsible for any of this because the people that get held accountable and responsible for doing shit like this, like it, it's you and me, it's not them. But at the very least, this could be used as a teachable moment to show you an example of it so that you can see it into the future. You may not have been able to see it up until now, but once you see it, it's really hard to unsee it. And when you do see it, hopefully it makes it easier for you to go, you know what? Listen, I may not like my neighbor for X, Y, and Z, but why did you approve spending $8 million on this project for our local community that didn't really work? Oh, and your brother-in-law was on the advisory board for it. Ah, and he had a salary of $180,000. Okay, okay, tell me. See, I want more of that to happen. I want more of people to put aside their pre-existing bias and just kind of think, like, is this person trying to get me mad because getting me mad will cause me to ignore what they're actually doing? And if that works, then maybe, just maybe, stuff like this happening can actually be a net good on society. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.